James Corburn buried himself in anguish and shame that led to the disaster two years later, and his wife James Corburn gave birth for the third time to James Harrison Corburn on August 31, 1928 in Laurel, Nebraska. Corburn was born and raised in Compton, California, and attended Compton Junior College. From November 1915-1900 to February 20, 1984, he was the second son of James Harrison Corburn and Miles Corburn. His father was of Scots-Irish ancestry, while his mother was Swedish immigrant. Elder Corburn ran a garage that was severely impacted by the economic slump. Corbin also described videos of military training in the German head. Corbin studied acting at the Los Angeles City College under Jeff Corey and Stella Alder, and later delivered his first theatrical performance at La Jolla Playhouse in Herman Melville's Billy Bud Corbin, the first professional work was live, television drama directed by Sidney Lumpett. He was chosen to market Remington products after cutting 11 days of bread growth in under 60 seconds, while joking that he had more teeth to show on camera than the other 12 candidates. In 1950, Corwin joined the Army and worked as a truck driver and part-time disc jockey for a Texas military radio show. Corbin's film career began in 1959 when he worked as a sidekick to a lonely Rudolph Scott Western, he swiftly found work on other Western refugee face in 1959. Roberts, a few episodes of NBC Bananas, Coburn appeared twice in one of two other NBC Western tales of Wells Fargo and Dale Robertson. One episode of Burt Cassidy and An Empty Gun with John was among the shows in which Coburn featured Payne Beside the Lake and The Way Back, near Bonanza's Dan Blocker, part of the stairwell. During the 1960s and 1961 seasons, Coburn featured Ralph Tager and Joy Lansing in a NBC drama, Klondike, set in the Alaskan Gold Rush settlement of Skegway, thanks to the intervention of his friend Robert Vaughn. Coburn also featured on CBS Perry Mason twice, once as a murder victim in the case of a jealous editor, and once as a murder victim in the case of an enraged star. In 1962, he praised Colonel Briscoe's performance in a CBS show about a kidnapped child, proclaiming that Rawhide Coburn had a nice role in hell as a 1960s hero in the war film with Steve. Coburn then starred in McQueen's The Great Escape, directed by Sturgis of Mortis, in which he portrayed Mortis Coburn, the Sunday 1963 Kings, in which he played one of the offenders of the 1963 farce starring Cary Grant and Aubrey Hepburn. While Klondike was canceled, Tigger and Coburn rejoined as detectives in Mexico in an NBC co-founded Acapulco for a little time. Butch Cassidy, Coburn's third picture, was a major success for him as a knife-wielding Brit in the 1970s, and it was released in 1958. The Moorish Company's John Sturgis directed the film. Coburn was next cast as a talent naval commander in Petty Chukovsky's The Americanization of Emily, replacing James Garner, who had advanced when William Holden's film was released, leading to a seven-year deal with 20th Century Fox. In 1965, Colburn played the only Indian tracker in Sam Peckinpah's film Great Dundee, which starred Charlton Heston and was directed by Sam Peckinpah. Colburn returned to Fox and made a sequel to the renowned Flint 1967 picture, but he did not want to shoot another one. Colburn was a hitman in Fox's 1969 Hard Contact, another flop. He was dissatisfied that he was one of many stars who had cameos in Candy in 1968 and that he was one of many stars who had cameos in Candy in 1968. Tennessee Williams' lost Hot Shot mobile game was in 1970 and Coburn tried to adjust the pace and get used to it. Sidney Lumet directed the film, however it was not well received. He went on to film the Western comedy Waterhole, 1967, as well as a political jab at a presidential commentator in 1967. In 1964, Coburn stated that if they gave him $25,000, he would film a fistful of dollars, which was too expensive to produce on a budget. You Sucker, also known as a fistful of dynamite, was not as popular in Western countries as Lyon, but it was extremely valuable, in Europe particularly in France. 
it was very popular. At the box office, no film has performed as well. However, the presidential commentator has become a cult classic over time. In 1967, Coburn was named Columbia's 12th Hollywood star. At Fox, he was the second to develop a tremendous atmosphere of Jamaica in the pirate film backing Anthony Quinn in 1965. Following the release of James Bond parody picture, Our Man Flint, 1966, starring super agent Derek Flynn of Fox, Coburn became a real star. At the box office, the picture was a huge hit. What did he do after that during the war? Blake Edwards' war joke of Martis Coburn in 1966 was fantastic. The movie was a flop at the box office. Columbia produced the crime film The Dead Heat in the merry-go-round in 1966. Coburn imitated Zapata Western Duck, You Sucker, with Rod Steiger and directed by Sergio Leone, as an Irish explosive expert and translator who fled to Mexico at the time in January 1970. Richard F. Zanuck of Fox discarded the $300,000 he had with Coburn in 1971. Coburn imitated Zapata Western Duck You Suck with Rod Steiger and directed by Sergio Leone as an Irish explosives expert and translator who fled to Mexico at the time. The early 20th century during which the Mexican Revolution took place. Back in the United States, he collaborated with Blake Edwards on the trailer The Carey Treatment, which was released in 1972. MGM messed up the cut and it bombed commercially. In 1972, when Coburn portrayed a rodeo rider, the two were hunters. In 1973, Coburn returned to Italy to film another western and was slain in a massacre at Fort Holman, where he reconnected with director Sam Peckinpah of the film Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, in which he played Pat Garrett. In 1973, Coburn was named Hollywood's 23rd most popular actor. Coburn was one of the celebrities who appeared on the cover of Paul McCartney's and his band's album Band on the Run in 1973. Dressed in prison garb, Waynes Corbin was among the celebrities that attended the funeral of Bruce Lee and his brother Steve McQueen. My brother was given a farewell speech by Robert Lee, Peter Chin, Danny High, and Tacky Kerma Corbin. As a friend and teacher, you have allowed me to integrate my physical, spiritual, and mental personas, and it has been an honor to share this space with you in advance. He made a cameo in the Muppet movie in 1979 and starred in the 1980 film Golden Girl in Baltimore character. He narrated The Roar of a Lion, a video about a 16th car mappa. In 1979, Coburn co-starred in Firepower with Sophia Loren, filing in for Charles Bronson when he later was released. In 1980, he was undoubtedly McLaren's romantic partner and was directing a Canadian film screening. Coburn married twice in 1980. In 1959, he married Beverly Kelly for the first time. As a couple, they had two children. In 1979, the couple divorced after 20 years of marriage. On October 22, 1993, He married actress Paula Morad Coburn in Versailles, France, and the couple stayed married until Coburn died in 2002. The James and Paula Coburn Charitable Foundation was established by the couple. Coburn was a karate student and a friend of Bruce Lee, a fellow actor. Following Lee's death on July 25, 1973, Coburn was one of his directors at his funeral. Thank you so much, and may peace be with you. Sheila's memorable 1973 film had Coburn as one of the few stars. In 1974, he starred in the fun series Harry in Your Pocket, and in 1975, he starred in The Internet Scene Project, 1975. Coburn predictably began to withdraw from the credit list. After Gene Hackman and Candace Bergman, he was the third construction director and author Rick Brooks to die in 1975. In the terrible circumstances of 1975, he co-starred with Charles Bronson in a picture directed by Walter Hill, but it was a very Bronson film. The movie was well-liked.
Colburn starred in an action flick, Writers, which was released in 1976. Then, in 1976, Last Hardman go up against Charlton Heston. He was one of many stars in Midway in 1976, and then he played the German soldier in Sam Peckinpah's Crossfire Thriller in 1977. Although this well-regarded battle did not go well in the United States, it had a significant impact in your reign. Until Peckinpah's death in 1984, Peckinpah and Coburn remained close friends. His macho features were so appealing in Japan that he became the face of his favorite tobacco brand. In the years that followed, he supplemented his income by transporting strange vehicles to Japan. He was paid $500,000 to market his new product and television ads as a spokesman for the Joseph Schlitz Beverage Company that same year by naming merely two Schlitz light phrases. James Coburn married a young woman when he was 48 years old. It caused her to admit she couldn't care for him because she had been diagnosed with cancer. He was a zealous follower of Zen and Tibetan Buddhism, and he amassed a collection of sacred Buddhist paintings. On November 18, 2002, at the age of 74, Coburn died of a heart attack at his Beverly Hills residence. Paula, his wife, said he died in her hands. Paula Colburn died of cancer on July 30, 2004, just over two years later. <laughs>